Hello guys, this time we are now ready to provide a truth table to prove that this argument is tautology or not, okay? So since we're done having the translation, there, oh yeah, here, the translation here, um, for those who want to review on how come we have this translation, just feel free to um, to review the video how to translate propositions into propositional forms, right? So here. Um, it was noted as well in my video how to start writing truth table that for us to start with truth table, we have to consider the number of propositions. In this case, we have two propositions based on the propositional forms here, F and O. So we are now to use the um, formula to do the power of N. Again, just in case you want to um, review this time on how to make or how to start with truth table, this time you may um, watch again the video entitled with how to write um, truth table or how to start writing a truth table. There it was explained and how come we have this um, formula right here, which is of course based on counting principle in statistics. Okay, so we have here to the power of n, where n is the number of propositions. Again, the number of propositions in this example would be 2. So we have here 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. As discussed in that video, um, having a title something like how to, how to write truth table um the answer here for would be the total number of rows that we are to consider um with the exclusion of course of our column heading um the propositions f and o there so yeah exclude excluding that column heading as our propositions we will be having a total of four rows for the consideration of all the possible situations there. Four. One, two, three, four. There you go. Now, as discussed as well in that video, it was noted that four here would be constantly divided by two for us to know the number of T's and F's for the first columns that we have in a truth table. So yeah, 4 divided by 2 would be 2. That means we'll be having 2 t's here, then 2 f's. The recent answer is 2. Divided by 2, the answer is 1. So we have by 1's of t and f. Here we go. Okay, so next would be what to write on the succeeding columns so that we will be done proving if the argument is tautology or not. Now, same thing with algebra. We have to consider the innermost propositional forms to consider. In this case, the innermost propositional forms would be um, the one which the ones which are grouped in this first um, grouping symbol parenthesis. We have here F or not O. So it will always be that the innermost propositional forms would be the consideration on the column headings or the succeeding column headings that we have in a, in a truth table. So that means that we have to have here um, the next column heading F or not O. But observe that for us to complete the column F or not O, we have to have the operation um, this junction between F and not O. We already have a column of F, but we don't have yet a column of not O. So how can we, you know, operate or compare these two propositions if if we don't have either of them? So that gives us a hint this time that before we are to write this column here, although this is the innermost um, propositional forms, we have to have complete columns 
for this innermost propositional form. So in that case, we are not ready yet for this column. We have to have first column 4, not O. Here you go. So once you're done with um, the default columns or the first columns of a truth table here, your next question would be, what is the innermost propositional form? So once you indicate the innermost propositional forms, before you write this as the next column heading, be sure that all the propositions there are being well presented by columns. So yeah, in this case, we have F, but we don't have yet not O. That's why we are to make first not O. Before we can make a column, F or not O. There. So we're done with that innermost column. Then the next would be innermost and it will be an outward um, outward direction. Um, if that's the innermost right there, the next would be this F right here but with the operation end. So it means that the next column heading would be F or not O and F. There. Lastly, um, since we're done with everything at our hypothesis, we can now write the entire argument. We don't have space right here, so we may have here say, um, let's have this as letter A. So let's have your letter A as our argument, okay? So that would be the entire F or O and not F, and it will imply O, okay? Now we're, um, we're done with all the column headings, so we are ready to complete our table here. So let's start with the third column, not O. Notice that it's not O here. So it's a negation of O. As noted, negation will have um, the total opposite truth table of the original statement. So in this case, since the original statement O has T as the truth value, not O would become F. Next, F here becomes T. T here becomes F, and F here becomes T. There. Next, we have here the column F or not O. So we are to operate this column here versus this column, and the operation is OR. Just in case you're not um, you're still not, uh, you have not familiarized yourselves with the concepts of, of the truth tables with our prepositions. You may always have or use this um, truth table that I have. So how to use this, for example, um, in this column F or not O, we are to... We are to consider this column and this column, so it means that we are to consider T or F. So if you if you have familiarized this time the concept of the truth table under disjunction, it says that once we have at least one T, automatically the disjunction would be T or the entire disjunction would be true. So in that case, we can now write here T. Or in the same manner, um, for us to answer T or F, we just have to base it from this truth table under OR. It says that we have here T or F. The answer is T. Okay, so that's how you use the truth table that we have here. There. So next would be we have here... Um, T or T. So for those who prefer using this truth table, we have T 
or T? The answer is T. Or again, since we just need at least one T for the, for the disjunction to be true. So automatically, this disjunction right here for our second row would be T as well. Next, we have F or F. That's F, of course. Lastly, we have um, F or T. That's still true. Okay. Next would be, notice that it says here, this F or not O, which is already this column, we are to operate this column with our first column, F, there. But the operation this time is end. End, okay? Under conjunction. So let's check. This column here versus this column and the operation is end. What is T and T? That's T. We're going back again to this truth table. This time we are to consider the conjunction. It says here T and T would give us T. Or for those who have familiarized themselves with the concept of this conjunction, it says that we need all of the conjuncts to be true for us to have a conjunction which is true. Once there's a false, automatically the entire conjunction is false, right? So next, we have T and T. So that is still T. Next would be F and F, of course, that is F. Lastly, we have F and T. We need all of the conjuncts to be true. We have an F here, so automatically this conjunction is F. There you go. So for our last um, column, which is the entire argument this time, it says that we need to have this hypothesis, which is, by the way, this column here our hypothesis and to be operated to this column right here as our conclusion since this is the hypothesis this should be the first part of our um, consideration before we have the conclusion O. okay so it's going this way for this example so let's check what is t implies t or what is if t then t so this time under implication hypothesis is true conclusion is true then we have here true so in here we'll have true Next, this time true implies F or what if the hypothesis is true and it gives us a conclusion of F. Hypothesis of true and a conclusion of F, that would give us F. So this one right here for a second column, I mean second row, would be F. Next, um, hypothesis is F gives us the conclusion T. Hypothesis F gives us the conclusion T. Hypothesis F gives us the conclusion T. That would be a true um, proposition or conditional statement. So the third row here would be true. Lastly, what is F implies F? That's I believe the last row here. F implies F gives us true conditional statement. So this one right here would be true. Now, for us to answer if the argument is if the argument is tautology or not, we have to have um 
all the possible situations to be true so in this case notice that we have a situation wherein we'll have a false argument that is um whenever the proposition the fish is fresh is true but then the proposition i will order fish is false this situation here this case will give us a false scenario so what's your conclusion our conclusion this time would be therefore the argument is not a tautology because for it to be a tautology we have to have all of the last column here to be true all right so um just in case this example is not that clear still for you guys um please inform me through writing a comment in the comment section then i'd be um, more than willing to have another um have another example for you all right